Hey guys, Stefan van Jarsveld here and welcome to my latest tutorial for fxhippo.com. Um, I'll call it corner pinning with mocha tutorial. Alright, so here's what we'll be creating. So really simple, but I'll go through all the steps um, just to see how I did it. All right, guys. Let's um, let's start by opening up After Effects. Um, CS4 will work fine. I'm working in CS5. We have both on here, so I'm just going to work CS5 for now. It's a bit speedier. Um, so you might be thinking, so where does corner pinning come into this little promo? Well, as you can see, when it starts the picture is sort of separate well that's because that picture wasn't there in the first place so if we take away all the layers here um, you'll see that there was actually a different painting so that's the original footage right there and I replaced it with a different painting let's say maybe the artist changes her mind or something she wants to change the change the one painting well I can do that and you can too um, if you follow this tutorial closely because if you don't then you probably won't be able to yeah, uh, so yeah, I replaced that painting and added some cool little details. So let's go through the steps of tracking this video in Mocha, bringing it back into After Effects with the corner pin effect, and making a nice little promo video like this. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. We have um, a raw video here that I took on a little Vado HD, little 720p handy cam pocket camcorder thing um, it's pretty crappy but it's it's nice it's a fun little camcorder so that's our raw footage so what, what I want you guys to do if you have your own little raw footage or similar footage of a painting grab your raw video and drag it down here to the new comp button the little film strip looking thing okay so our little comp is FX Hippo Toot 5 so let's rename that uh, where is it here we go so I press enter to rename. So let's call it corner pin two, so we don't get lost. Okay. Um, so what you want to do, click on the toot itself, and then up here you'll see some details. You'll see it's 1280 by 720, and it's 30 frames per second. Now these are really important, so keep these in mind when we go into Mocha. Okay, so let's actually go straight into Mocha. So hide After Effects. Go find the raw video. So here's our raw video assets. This is the same video we used of the painting. Um, and drag that onto your Mocha icon. Now before I do that, actually, I want to show you guys where Mocha is. Um, so you can go to Applications, and you go to your uh, either After Effects CS4 or CS5, and you'll find it right there in the folder. Uh, CS5 looks the same, pretty sure. Or over there, that's in a separate folder. So that's where you find Mocha. Lots of people don't know that. It's a little hidden surprise. All right, so you go, you take your raw footage, same, exact same video that you used in After Effects, dragged onto the new comp button. Has to be the same, make sure. 30 frames per second, 1280 by 720p. If you're not sure, open it in QuickTime and press Command or Apple I. This little thing of box will pop up you'll see frames per second 30 and formats 1280 resolution by 720 so 720p 30 frames per second exactly the same cool so let's drag that onto the mocha for after effects icon Doo -doo. all right so yours might look a bit different if you've got version one but the basics stay the same um, this is the clip we're importing, that's where it's located, and this is where the save file is going to be. So you can change that, I'll change that to a little mocha scratch I made. Okay, choose. Cool. This is the frame range, this is how far we're going to track. Uh, take the whole video, because that's the whole clip we're using. If you start playing around with that, your track might be off later on, because the computer will confuse where the tracking data starts. So frames per second, usually mocha is good at uh, detecting the frames, frame per second and the frame size by itself, but just make sure, 30 frames per second, pixel aspect ratio HD, 
separate fields off because it's progressive 720p, not not uh, interlaced. Okay, I'm happy with that. Don't don't go into advanced just yet. We'll talk about that later. Um, okay. Uh, this project file already exists because I've done this before, so yes, you can override it. All right, we're ready to go. Um, now, a lot of you might not know Maka, but I'll just go through the basics as I go along. I won't go into any major details. I'll make a separate tutorial focusing uh, solely on Maka a bit later on. So what we want to do is we want to create a corner pin for this painting here. For those who don't know what a corner pin is, pretty much we're going to make four pins in these corners, which makes sort of a shape around that and covers it. And then that becomes tracked onto that painting. And we can replace that object, that tracked object, with anything we like, such as a new painting. So what I'm going to do is come up here to Create Explined Layer. Uh, the explined is your tracking item. That's what tracks your videos. So if you guys don't know already, Mocha tracks in planes. One plane would be this plane here. That's a plane. It's sort of a flat 2D surface. Another plane would be the table here. If you guys catch my drift, there's different planes. Yeah. And another plane would be up here. So that's what Mocha is made for, tracking planes. It's a planar tracker, two-dimensional tracker. So what we're going to do is track the plane of this painting. So choose the x blind layer tool and create a sort of loose shape around the painting. Make sure it's quite loose. Mocha doesn't work really well if you do tight, tight shapes. And with these blue handles here, you can sort of adjust it. Don't make it square, but make it sort of circular um, just to give Mocha enough room. Okay, now Mocha has this really useful set of tools over here. I'll get into that in a second. Let's just rename our layer here. This is the tracking layer that we just made. So just rename it painting corner pin. All right. So what you want to do now is come to the set of tools over here and choose surface. Now this is key for corner pinning. So choose surface and you'll see when you select your layer up here that this blue rectangle now pops up. Now what you want to do is take the, those corners. If you turn on zoom window, it'll help. Take these four corners and line it up with the four corners of the paintings. You're pretty much drawing a square around the painting. The bottom and the bottom left. So this will help you judge the track, whether it's good or not. Uh, grid will also help. It just places a grid over. I'm just going to leave that off for now once we're done. All right. So now you have some options down here in the motion. This is a really important part. Um, generally, for normal tracks, I only do translation, scale, and rotation. But in this case, in a corner pin where we're tracking this flat surface, it has quite a perspective to it compared to the other surfaces. So we'll choose perspective. It's quite... I'm not sure the exact explanation behind it, but... um. Here we go, model perspective effect between images. All right, so now what you should do is track. So how do you track? You come over here to the track uh, to the track bar area here. And you see here, similar to After Effects, track to next frame or track one frame, same to After Effects, um, and track forwards. So track forwards will just let it go frame, 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 frame. And frame by frame, uh, you can manually look at each frame. So what I'm going to do is just let it run, and I'll come back to you guys. We'll come back after it has tracked. So it takes some time, but be patient and and keep an eye on it, because sometimes it does pop out of uh, pop out of sync with the track. So just keep an eye on it. Okay, guys, that was part one. Uh, this is part of a playlist, so part two will start playing after this message. If not, click here for part two.